But we do start with an astonishing news conference from FIFA president Gianni Infantino. What was supposed to be a 45-minute Q&A with the press on the eve of the Men's World Cup turned into a rambling one-hour monologue in which he steadfastly defended Qatar's migrant workers' policy, accused the West of moral hypocrisy and declared that the tournament will be the best ever. Infantino also labelled those saying they were paid fake fans in Qatar as racist. The FIFA president began his news conference with an unprompted and extraordinary statement. I have... Uh very strong feelings, I can tell you that. Today I feel uh, Qatari. Today I feel Arab. Today I feel African. Today I feel uh, gay. Today I feel disabled. Today I feel uh, a migrant worker. The issue around migrant workers dominated Infantino's discussion. Qatar has been criticised by human rights groups because of the number of workers who've died building the infrastructure for the tournament. The president has accused the West of hypocrisy in its reporting and says Europe should be apologising for its own history before making any comments on the Middle East. I know what it means to be discriminated, to be bullied as a foreigner in a foreign country, as a child at school. I was bullied because I had uh, red hair. It's not easy every day and every day to read all these critics for decisions which have been taken 12 years ago when nobody of, there, of us was, was there. And now everyone knows that we have to make the best out of it and we have to make the best World Cup ever. ever. And Doha is ready, Qatar is ready. It will be the best World Cup ever, of course. What is sad is that, especially in the last weeks, we have been assisting on, uh, in some places, a real lesson of moral, of double moral. We are told many, many lessons from some Europeans, from the Western world. I'm European. Actually, I am European not just I feel European. I think for what we Europeans have been doing in the last 3,000 years around the world, we should be apologizing for the next 3,000 years before starting to give moral lessons to people. This moral lesson giving, one-sided, it's just hypocrisy. Well, the monologue didn't end there. Next in his sights was the accusations of supporters being paid not only to travel to the tournament, but also being paid to support certain teams. The FIFA president labelled it as racism. The world is divided enough. We are organising a World Cup. We're not organising a war. We organise a World Cup where people, where people who have many problems, everyone in his or her life, want to come and enjoy. Look at the city. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's geared up. People are happy to celebrate. They were happy when the teams come. And when the teams come, they go to see the teams. And what do I read? Well, these people, they don't look like English. They shouldn't cheer for English because they look like Indians. I mean, what is that? Can somebody who looks like, in like an Indian not cheer for England or for Spain or for Germany? You know what this is? This is racism. This is pure racism. And we have to stop that. Because everyone in the world has the right to cheer for who he wants. 
Well, let's get more on that and speak to our chief reporter, Carve Solokol, who was in the room for that extraordinary press conference. He's live at the main media centre in Doha. Morning to you, Carve. Well, that was quite something, wasn't it? What was your take on it? Well, it was a very bizarre performance from uh, Gianni Infantino. I think some of the things he was saying were absolutely ridiculous. And at times, uh, it seemed like he's almost developed a messiah complex. I think the problem uh, FIFA presidents have is that they fly around the world all the time. They meet a lot of heads of states. And after a while, they start to think and act as if they are a head of state as well. And I got the feeling today that he was talking almost like he was sort of Donald Trump. Some of the stuff he was coming out with was dividing and ruling. It almost seemed like he was trying to stoke tensions uh, between Europe and the rest of the world. And I have to say, a lot of the things he was saying were absolutely ridiculous. I think if people in that room, 400 journalists, if we had microphones, we would have interrupted him during the speech to correct uh, some of the mistruths that he was uh, coming up with. I mean, some of the stuff was absolutely ridiculous. I've seen some extraordinary uh, press conferences in my time. That was one of the absolutely most extraordinary ones I've seen. You spoke there about potentially journalists could have corrected Gianni Infantino for some of the things he was saying. One of his comments was that this World Cup has driven change in Qatar. You would suspect that the families of some of the migrant workers would probably disagree on that. Look, it was extraordinary. He said, today I feel like a migrant worker. Now, I don't know what his exact salary is, but I'm pretty sure it is well over one million dollars. I think it's insulting for the FIFA president on the eve of a World Cup to say he feels like a migrant worker when we know for a fact that many of the migrant workers who have built the stadiums and built the infrastructure for this World Cup were getting paid as little as one pound an hour, often to work and live in absolutely terrible conditions. So for my part, when he said that he felt like a migrant worker, I could not believe what I was hearing. He also went on to say that he, he, he felt like a migrant worker because when he was a child, his family uh, emigrated from Italy to Switzerland. So he knew what it was like to be an outsider, to be a migrant. He said that when he was at school, uh, he was bullied because he had red hair and freckles. I think, again, insulting uh, to be comparing getting bullied at school to living and working in the conditions that some of the migrant workers have had to live and work in in Qatar over the past 12 years uh, to build the infrastructure and the stadiums that you're going to see on your TV screens uh, over the next few weeks. He also spoke, Carve, about the LGBTQ plus community, many of whom don't feel safe going to support their team, going to support their country in Qatar. What did he have to say about that? Again, he started off by saying, today, I feel gay. Uh, my personal point of view, again, I think that is insulting to say that when he is in a country where being gay is against the law. It is criminalised. And FIFA have decided to bring the World Cup here when they keep telling us that football is for everybody. Everyone is included. So again, I thought it was ridiculous for him to say that. During the whole press conference, I really got the feel that we were, I don't want to be insulting to Gianni Infantino, but it felt like you were listening to somebody who had had a few drinks too many. He was getting a lot off his chest. He, he was very frustrated about all the criticism that he'd been uh, receiving. And I just felt that maybe it was time for somebody to tap him on the shoulder and say, Gianni, you've had one too many. It's time to go home. Unfortunately, nobody did that and he kept talking and talking and talking until uh, we journalists were allowed to ask him some questions. But again, the problem with these Q&As at press conferences is, as journalists, we get the microphone and we get one question. We ask the question, we try to make it a good question, but then the floor belongs to Gianni Infantino. He can say what he wants. It's up to him how he answers that question. We don't have the microphone. We can't ask a follow-up question. So, again, 
you have to bear in mind that although he was scrutinised, although he was asked questions by journalists afterwards, he really was in control of what was happening. Now, after Gianni Infantino uh, finished answering questions from journalists, uh, the man who was sitting next to him, uh, Brian Swanson, who is the director of media relations at FIFA, said he wanted to say a few words. This is what he said. I've seen a lot of criticism of Gianni Infantino since I've joined FIFA, in particular from the LGBTQI community. I am sitting here in a privileged position on a global stage as a gay man here in Qatar. We have received assurances that everybody is welcome, and I believe that everybody will be welcome in this World Cup. Just because Gianni Infantino is not gay does not mean that he doesn't care. He does care. You see the public side, I see the private side, and we have spoken on a number of occasions about this. I thought long and hard about whether to mention this in this news conference. This, after all, is a news conference for the FIFA president, but I do feel strongly about it. We care at FIFA about everyone. We are an inclusive organisation. I have a number of gay colleagues. So sitting here, I'm fully aware of the debate and I fully respect everyone's right and everyone's opinions to think differently. I get it. But I also know what we stand for. And when he says that we are inclusive, he means it.